Hi guys, I'm here with Teddy and I'm going to talk to you today about how I am able to very successfully manage Teddy's perineal hernia. Okay, so if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you already know that your dog has a perineal hernia. Um, you know what it is, your vet explained it to you, but just briefly, um, if you don't, let's talk about it because maybe you're just watching this video because you just want to be informed in case it does happen to your dog. So basically, um, a perineal hernia is just like a hernia that can happen to humans um, where there is a tear in basically the, the fascial type structure that holds our intestinal organs in place. So when a dog is straining to move their bowels, sometimes they will tear a hole in that lining and then their intestines will actually protrude and it could be any part of the intestine actually. Usually um, what you'll see is part of, part of the, the anus. The, um, sorry, Gus is running around the yard barking at the neighbor dog. Anyway. So just the, the very end of the track, right before the anus, is usually the part of the intestine that will protrude out into that sac or the hole, if you will. Um, and that's what you call a perineal hernia. And like I mentioned, it's usually from dog straining to go to the bathroom, um, whether they're constipated quite often, or um, you'll see it a lot in older dogs. And what I found out is, um, when the dog is intact, they're an intact male, meaning they have not been neutered, that can also kind of predispose them to getting that hernia. Okay, so that's what it is. And so now I'm gonna to talk to you about how we manage it. So I want Teddy to, to be in the, in the shot here. Okay, so Teddy is a Pekingese. He's 14, going on 15, he'll be 15 in January. So he is a senior citizen. And my vet was not comfortable operating on him to fix the hernia. So this is something that I basically had to learn how to do myself. Um, my vet at the time has suggested some, some light massaging to attempt to help Teddy pass his bowel movements. Um, but the technique that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes is kind of a an upgrade from that. It's a step above it, if you will. So before we get to that though, um, your dog's diet can immensely help this situation. Very, very important. So what I recommend are foods that do not cause the stool to become very firm. Okay. So pumpkin is an amazing vegetable that you can add to your dog's diet. Um, it's high in fiber, and it allows the stool to stay soft and more um, malleable, if you will. <laughs> I'm gonna talk a lot about poop today. Um, another really good vegetable to add are ground up green beans. Make sure if, when you're adding vegetables to your dog's, dog's food, I would suggest that you lightly cook them and that you grind them up into a puree with your food processor or a blender or something like that. So adding in some higher fiber vegetables is really, really going to help. And also, Tay eats a completely homemade diet. Um, yes, you could feed kibble, but I think that's a that's going to be a case-by-case -case thing. If your dog does really well on kibble and their stool isn't overly hard, then maybe just add in like a tablespoon or two of pumpkin and, you know, see how that goes. If you're finding that the stool on a kibble diet is way too hard then maybe it would be worth it for you to invest some time and a little bit more money and cook your dog's food and i do have videos on teddy's diet so please refer back to that i believe that the title of the video is called what i feed my senior pekingese or it's a senior pekingese diet that'll give you a really good idea of what i feed teddy um, the other thing i would suggest is just a little bit of oil in there fish oil fish oil is great it's going to reduce inflammation and just whenever you add that little bit of oil in their food, it just kind of helps everything move along through the intestinal tract a little bit better. I'm telling you it helps. So it's well worth the investment. Fish oil is not expensive at all. 
Okay, so that covers the diet thing. Hydration is obviously also important. Let's add that in really quick. Make sure your dog stays hydrated. Make sure they have clean water available at all times. Now there's a plane flying over my head. It's fine. Uh, neighbor dog's barking, it's fine, whatever. So stay hydrated. If the animal is just like us, we become dehydrated, what happens to our stool? It's really hard, firm, that's when we get constipated and we want to avoid that. We want the stool to stay nice and soft so that when you do this technique, everything just passes through nice and easy. All right. Okay guys, we're here with the little prince himself, Mr. Ted. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna spin him around. I'm gonna readjust and come to this side. Okay, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So whenever you are, are doing this, basically I wanna say this first, is you need to go outside with your dog every single time they go to the bathroom. So every time you let them out your back door, whatever, into, their, into your yard to go pee or whatever, you need to go with them because you need to be available to do this technique at all times. If you start to miss the opportunity to assist your dog to move their bowels, that perineal hernia, if they're straining, can become larger, okay? So you might have a hole maybe this big. If you miss this and they're outside in your yard straining to poop, it's a very good chance that this hole is now going to be this big because you are not there to help them. So it, if you have somebody else watching your dog, like you have to be proactive and show them how to do this too, okay? Um, so let's just get that out of the way. Every single time Teddy goes out, I go with him, I watch him, I'm there, ready to assist with the pooping. <laughs> okay, all right, so Teddy's hernia, I'm gonna lift up his tail here. So yeah, we're looking at his butt, it's okay. So um, his anus is right here, okay? I kind of shaved everything. I, I keep the fur back here trim shorter just so that I can see what's going on and feel everything. And it just helps keep everything cleaner too. So here's his anus. His hernia is actually off to the right, okay? Um, when he has to move his bowels, that little protrusion fills with stool, okay? So I can actually see a little bit of a bubble here. And more importantly, I can feel it, okay? So about the size of two fingers and I can feel a firmness in there now it's very very slight right now so he probably doesn't have to move his bowels just yet but I can already feel that there is a little bit of stool there okay so some vets will show you well just kind of massage it lightly okay what actually needs to happen is you need to fully push everything back into place essentially okay so if you can imagine that, okay, here's the hole. Let's go this way. Here's the hole. And the intestines have protruded from that hole. With your hand, you need to push the intestines and that stool back down so that it's flush with the cavity of his body. I hope that makes sense, okay? Because you can visually see a, a lump, a bump, on the opposite on um, just the side of his of his anus here and so basically what I'm doing with my hand is I'm physically pushing that back into place so that the bump no longer sticks out past any other part any other portion of his butt okay it's the best way I can describe it sometimes I do have to push a lot harder than other times okay and I'm gonna put him down because he wants to walk around now <laughs> okay What's up guys, I'm back in my house editing the video that I just made and I just wanted to clarify really quickly, um, whenever you do push in that bump, you need to hold that bump in place, keeping it flush with the surface of their, of their bum for as long as it takes them to move their bowels, okay? So you don't just push it in, they start to push to poop and then like you remove your hand. That That's not what this is. You need to push in, you need to hold it while they push their stool out. Continue to hold until they are finished pooping. Then you remove your fingers. Okay, just to clarify. 
Teddy is to the point now where he knows that once my fingers are there, he will actually start to push because it, he knows now that it feels way better to go to the bathroom when mommy is holding in what we now call his poop button. <laughs> Because, you know, you have to make light of things like this, okay? So, when I when I push in his poop button, he will start to move his bowels because he knows that it feels a heck of a lot better to do it whenever I'm helping him than when he's trying to do it by himself. So, just be okay with pushing a lot harder than what you might think. Now, I want to go back to talking about how... The, the depth that we need to get. So I kind of gave the example, okay, imagine here's the hole, right? Hole, intestine, stool, push, protrude out. The skin's covering it, but you can see that this would be a lump right here, okay? When you push down, all you're looking to do is push so that it's flush. Do not continue to push into the body. Do not continue to push your hands deep inside their body. That is completely not necessary, okay? It's very important. When you push in, you push flush with the body. The intestines, the stool, everything, once it's flush with the body, will move itself back into its natural position anyway, and they'll be able to push the stool right out, okay? So push as hard as you need to to get it flush, but stop when it's flush. Don't continue to push in. Very important. Oh, look at my boys. Aren't they cute? Okay, unfortunately, um, you know, just due to the, the timing and the nature of things, I don't think I'll be able to actually give you like a demo with Teddy pooping, but it's okay. I think I got my point across. If you guys have any other questions about this technique, please leave a comment on this video and please share this video. You know, if you know anybody whose dog is dealing with this, this information is not out there to my knowledge. Like this is just me fiddling around and thinking to myself, well, gee, you know, I wonder if I push that thing back in, if it will help him. And sure enough, it did. And we are very well managed at this point. He's a, a little happy man and he has normal sized stools. He does not strain anymore and all is well. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, please subscribe to this channel. I do continue to put out videos like this. You know, whenever something comes across in our daily life and I'm like, oh, you know, I think people need to know this. I will make a video about it. And yeah, I guess that's it. All right, guys. Wish you all well with your fur babies. Peace.